What's up welders? Welcome to another episode of Adventures in Welding. I'm Paul. Thanks for joining me. Now in today's episode we're going to talk about tungsten electrodes for GTAW or TIG welding. Selecting them, using them, and prepping them for their use aka grinding. Now what I've got here, in addition to a handful of electrodes, is this uh, tungsten electrode selection chart from our friends at weld.com. And we're going to talk a little bit about the different types of electrodes, and then we'll go into prepping them and grinding them. Now we're going to start off first with the red electrode, or 2% thoriated. 2% thoriated is probably the most popular electrode out there and it is your tungsten metal which is one of the hardest metals and the highest melting point of any metal at about 3400 degrees and it is alloyed with thorium which is a slightly radioactive material so that's why there's some controversy involving the 2% thoriated electrodes, but they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Good electric. Now we are going to contrast that with the green or the pure tungsten electrode. If you're using an inverter type welder, and if you're not sure if you're using an inverter type welder, pick it up. If it doesn't weigh a couple hundred pounds, it's probably an inverter. Then we have lanth lanthanated electrode. This is a 2% lanthanated. And it is probably the second most popular type of tungsten electrode. And if anything ever happens to the thoriated, they're removed from the market or whatnot. This will probably be its replacement. If you're a fan of welding tips and tricks, Jodia tells you all the time that he uses uh, lanthanate electrodes for everything. Now there are some new electrodes on the market. This one is the E3 type electrode. You can see it has kind of a uh, dusky purple color. There's also the laser electrode and the arc time hybrid electrode. All those are uh, new, relatively newer electrodes and fall into the all purpose category. Now, if you need more information on it, you can download this chart that I have here from weld.com. All right, just for our discussion purposes here, this is a uh, <laughs> 332 inch E3 electrode, and it's brand new, never been used. You can see the purpley coated back tip and the square cut off front tip. Now you're not going to be able to use your tungsten electrodes like that. They need to have a tip placed on them. So there are three basic kinds of tips that you can have. The first is a point. The second is the truncated point and the third is the ball type of point. Now let's start by talking about the ball. The ball is only good for AC and only if you have a transformer. type of machine. If you're using an inverter, even on AC, skip the ballpoint and go with one of these two. Now, we have the point and the truncated point. The point is only good for low amps but it does produce a very nice, very focused arc. The truncated 
grind is good for just about everything. Now, how are you going to grind your point? Well, there are lots of ways, but let's talk about how you're going to make that point or truncated point. You want it to be, I can't do this upside down anymore, two to two and a half times the width of the electrode itself. And what we're saying here is, you know, your electrode is this wide. So if you had it doubled and then a half, this distance here is the maximum distance that you want it to be. So once again, we have our electrode and you're gonna want your point to be about that long. So when you grind it, you want a point like that. You don't want to end up with that or with that. And the final thing I want to talk about is that when you grind your point, this is, let's say this is um, scaled up so we can get a better look. You want your grinding marks to run the length of the electrode. You do not want your grinding marks to run across the electrode. That's going to cause arc wandering and all sorts of ugliness. All right, welders, what are you going to use to grind the point on your tungsten? Now, there are dedicated tungsten grinders out there. And if you look there in the corner of your screen, I'm showing you a picture of one of them right now. But they are rather expensive, so if you're not doing this for a living, you're probably not going to have one of those. But you might have a grinder, a bench grinder. This is a small 3-inch bench grinder that I use. And if you can see in there, it has a diamond wheel. This here, guys, a portable belt sander. Use that too. You can also use a regular grinder. And regardless of which method you use, make sure you wear a face shield, especially if you're grinding the thoriated tungsten. You might also want to throw on a dust mask or a respirator so that you're not inhaling any of that radioactive uh, thorium. Uh, one final thing, there is a chemical sharpener called ChemSharp where you get your electrode uh, red hot, orange hot, really, really hot, and you dip it in there, but I have never used it, so I cannot comment on it. All right, on to some grinding technique. All right, folks, the first method we're going to talk about using is your basic four and a half inch grinder. Now, regardless of which method you use, you're going to find things go a whole lot easier if you chuck your uh, electrode up in a drill. I like mine on high speed. And here we go. Now, to do this, you need to know the direction of the spin on this one. It is this way, so it will be counterclockwise or for those of you in Canada, anti-clockwise. You want to hold your electrode at a nice shallow angle to get your point. And you want to make sure that the wheel is going to be rotating along the electrode. You don't want to be holding it like this or you're going to get those crosswise grinding marks. And 
and there you can see we've got a nice truncated point on there one final note if you're using the grinding disc to grind your tungsten, make sure you mark that disc and you don't use anything else so you do not get cross contamination all right the next method we're going to use is the grinding belt again you want to make sure that you keep your tungsten at a shallow angle and the rotation of the belt is along the length of the electrode There you have it again, the same thing, our nice truncated point. Again, make sure you don't use this for anything else so as not to contaminate your electrode. One. All right, the final one we're gonna talk about is the bench grinder method. Like I said, this one has a diamond wheel. And there you have it, folks. I don't know if that's focusing it or not. A nice truncated point, and that diamond wheel produces a very nice, smooth finish. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Adventures in Welding. Part two in our Open Root series will be up next. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Now get the hell out of here.